Today's episode is sponsored by Dansoft Gamers. Dansoft Gamers is the leading distributor of video games and other consumer gadgets like the podcast microphone sets, ring lights, headphones, and affordable smart watches, and many other cool gadgets. For these and more, visit their website at www.dansoftgamers.co. That is www.dansoftgamers.co. Mujebale, mujebale, mujebale. My name is Barney Kibuka and welcome to another episode of the Ugandan Ball Talk Show. Hello, uh, welcome once again to the Ugandan Boy Talk Show with your boy, Bonnie Kibuka. Um, yeah, today we're going to have a new episode uh, about like how I've been doing in the past. Uh, if we have any housekeeping information that I need to put out on the podcast, um, I like to bring it on before we publish the new podcast or before we publish the new episode. So yeah, today I'm back on this uh podcast to just share some housekeeping information about things that are going on on the podcast and I'm so excited so pumped um most of you know like last week last weekend uh we received an award uh the podcast influencer of the year from Pauls Uganda that was exciting um I'm so happy I'm thankful to all the people that sent me messages uh sent me um like shared on their stories they showed their excitement about this award uh, it meant a lot to me i've learned a lot of lessons uh through the voting process i learned a lot of lessons too i learned i saw how my family came together to uh vote i saw how my friends came together to vote i saw how my friends were determined to stand behind me and even when i i wanted to withdraw out of the voting I saw how my friends were like no Bonnie you can't do that we're going to stand and vote so it taught me a lesson of never giving up I'm the kind of person who likes to encourage people about oh you don't give up do what you can do but then I was the other person on I was the person on the other side who was giving up because of some things I wasn't comfortable about or some things that um uh, this contentment that I, ex- I shared most of you saw that on the social media I don't want to go back into that but the lesson i picked out of that is like my friends were like no we're going to do it and it it all it all came together when i received the word uh most of you have seen this video going around on my social media pages of me on facetime receiving the award um it was such a cool moment i was so happy that my cousin my friends and my big brother benjamin was there to receive the word that was such a special moment if you've not seen this video it's up on my facebook and on my instagram but i'm so so excited i'm thankful for everybody that voted um i didn't want to miss out anybody all people around the world and that's why i wanted to put this at the beginning of this episode so that i can get an opportunity to thank all the listeners and all the friends and friends of bani that voted for us to get this award and it's such a recognition that the hard work of putting to this and the consistency of putting to this uh it's it's paid off and I, i'm happy to see that uh so i just wanted to drop in to thank you for that and we we're still going on we i'm not going to give up on this and uh the other thing i was going to mention about um the receiving feedback there was a lady that sent me a, a feedback on my podcast it was audio feedback and she was really thankful and just told me she enjoys the podcast and she's supposed to a child in Uganda and she basically just wanted to learn more about Uganda through listening to these uh podcasts so i'm so pumped i'm so happy and like i told most of my friends like this is just the beginning i'm not ready to give up i'm going to stay consistent and bring you these episodes um and today talking a little bit about what we're going to have today um I hosted a, a good guy uh Sozi Arthur and he's an artist he paints pictures um he draws cartoons and recently he had he he had 
his work published in the Daily Monitor, one of the newspapers in Uganda. And I had to sit down with him and just go through his story, go through his life, uh, know what he's been through and how he got where he's at. I know he's still on the journey, but it was such a cool time to sit down with Sozi and just learn about his life. Uh, his family background, where he's at, his achievements, and how he got to do what he's doing. So this is such a cool story. Sit through and listen to it. Uh, he talks about different things of his life in high school. So and that's the purpose of the story. Get every details of a bit as we walk through the person's journey. So this is a good episode for you to enjoy, and I can't wait to hear what you guys say about this episode. Once again, I'm so excited, pumped, and um if you notice on the numbers, we are on episode 99. So that means the next ex- episode is going to be 100. So I'm so excited for that too, that I'm going to make my 100th podcast episode uh, next weekend. And I was telling people, if you have any questions that you want me to incorporate in my 100th episode, uh, put them on here and I'm going to go through them. I'm preparing for what the 100th episode is going to look like. So if you want anything featured on there, questions, suggestions, ideas, what you want to say, anything, I'm going to be discussing that in my 100th episode, plus some of the other stuff that uh, you might not know, surprise that I'll bring. So let me know, and let's enjoy this episode today. Thank you very much. I'm glad to see you here. And you know what's most exciting? You're wearing an mm. Arsenal jersey. I will start yeah, right there. Today, <laughs> today we are playing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but um I know I know we'll win. So Mr. Sozi, how how, how are you doing? Yes, I'm okay. How are you? I'm not complaining. Mm-hmm. I'm surviving. Yeah, yeah. that's how I am. Yeah, <laughs> I'm actually waiting for the match. That's really mm-hmm. good. That's really good. Um when I looked at your pictures on Instagram or when I first saw you before even I started talking to you, I thought mm-hmm. like this guy is really quiet, is a China Gambo. But the moment <laughs> we started talking, I, I noticed like uh-uh, I think I was wrong. I think this guy likes to talk. So I'm also confused sometimes. I confuse myself. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have words, sometimes I don't have words. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you what with you. Tuba na bigamba. Ah ah. Tuba na byonga ngatukubawa. Ngatuwangu de. Eh. Tigena bifu na after the match. Yeah, tigena bifu na after the match. Um but anyway, I I I don't know if I've explained to you I wanted to have you on my podcast um mm-hmm. because of what you do. I have seen your work on Instagram and I really like to bring people on the podcast uh, like you to share about your journey, your story, and to inspire mm-hmm. another kid who might have the same talent that you do that um, mm-hmm. doesn't know how to go about it. So today we're just going to be having a conversation about that, um, your journey, uh, your life, and how you ended up in what you do and how you do what you do. Uh, but to begin with, I just want to ask you, uh, where are you from and, and your family background? Um, I'm from Uganda, uh, Buganda, the central part of Uganda. Sozi Arthur Grace is my name. I usually use Sozi a lot because uh, I like the fact that it's unique. I like to embrace that Africanacity in it. Yeah, uh, I was born here in Makere. You know Makere? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's where I was born. Then I went to in the village in Mitiana. Then I came back. So I've always been moving around the central yeah. part of the country. Okay. I'm currently at university. I don't know if that was part of your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to ask. I was going to, after this, I was going to ask you, like, to walk me through your education. Like, where did you go to primary and high school and primary. Then university? Oh, I went to City Prince Primary School. Oh, those fancy schools in Kampala. Yeah. yeah. Those uh-huh. fancy schools. <laughs> I'll accept that fact. I went to City Prince Primary School. My mom always uh, embraced the fact of, of like putting me around children from like uh, better backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Because apparently, the, it's like your network is your network. So if you grow up with like connecting with these people, making friendships and stuff. Eh? Mm-hmm. End of the day, these are people that can elevate you from one step to another. Exactly. So I was in city parents for seven years. 
then after I went to Masaka St. Henry's College Tovu. I don't know if you yeah, know that's about a it. good that's a good school too. I think I applied to uh, you know when after P7 where you put your first choice and stuff. I think I had St. Mm-hmm. Henry's uh, College Tovu on my uh, yeah. those schools that you apply to. Mm. You got I no, I think I got my first choice actually. I applied to it's a school in Fort Porto. I don't even mm. remember. Um, I don't remember the name, but I applied to the school in Fort Porto, which I got my first choice. But my dad didn't want me to go to Fort Porto, so I ended up not oh. going there. So I went to the local schools and uh, where I grew up in Wakiso. Mm. So I went to City, uh, sorry, I went to St. Henry's College for four years it was a single school yeah and i didn't really like that fact about it mm. actually on the journey our journey when i was going to massacre yeah. i asked my mom am i going to change the school after my form four like mm-hmm. i didn't even join form one but i wanted mm-hmm. to change the school <laughs> and she was like no let's let's we shall cross the bridge when we reach when it there. yeah uh, when we get there so i was there for my four years it was pretty nice uh, I was around after form four. I was like, you know what? I think I have to change school. Like before, so, before form four, mm-hmm. how was the how was the life like in a single school? Let me just even just enlarge so, on that. Like, <laughs> how was the life? Because I've never been in a single school. I've hosted a few people on my podcast here that have. They were mm-hmm. female though. They went to girls' school, and they've shared a little bit about their experiences in a girls' school. How was your experience in a boys' school? What things did you like about it and what did you hate about it? I think, okay, the things I liked about uh, being in a single sex school, mm-hmm. I think uh, there were no, we didn't have these pressures of like, you know, high school is when all these adults and set scene mm-hmm. and like yeah. all that interest in girls, all that mm-hmm. chemistry, all those. Yeah, we really didn't have that a lot because, you know, you, you're moving around, boys, you, you, you don't have to have this thing of like, oh, what do the girls think about me? All yeah. that drama. Mm-hmm. And then uh, St. Henry's College in uh, in particular had this thing of instilling the, uh, like teaching the boys how to, to be gentlemen, eh? like how to how to hold yourself, how to like dress up like a gentleman, all those morals and stuff. Actually, we had a blazer, you know, like a blazer we put on our yeah. uniform. Eh? Yeah. And so that blazer, it... You, you would never be allowed to make it wet. Mm. The next is that it, if it found, if, if you're like in the compound, it's say raining, mm-hmm. you, have, you have to remove your blazer and fold it and then like walk while protecting it from the rain. Oh, wow. So <laughs> we had like those, uh, those small, small cultures and like those little principles. It was really nice. But my problem with, oh, I can now go to the bad thing, mm-hmm. I think, is it? Yeah. Yeah, some of the bad things with single sex school. I I think school prepares us for for a mixed life. Mm-hmm. Like after school, you're going to engage with the opposite sex, be it in relationships, be it in work. But now here is a system where they're preparing you for the future, but you're not you're not interacting with girls, you're not interacting with the opposite sex. Like yeah, uh, a school has to teach you like if someone pisses you off, this is how you handle it. But the only gender that is pissing you off is the boy, mm-hmm. and you have learned how to handle that. But then you haven't been exposed to like if a girl pisses you off, how do you handle that? Yeah, you get like and realize uh, we like girls and boys are not like we don't react the same way, we mm-hmm. don't see things the same way. So I feel. That's the part that, miss, that misses out when you're in a single sex school. Mm-hmm. To annex that, annex it that when you come out, you now have to catch up. Like some of these things are new. Yeah. Actually, one of our chemistry teachers was telling us that a boy who was going to a single sex school, when they come out, they're either very interested in girls or not interested in girls. You mm-hmm. get it? Yeah. Or like they, they, they are very good at relating with girls because like they, they are trying to fill that void mm-hmm. or they they really fear girls and they're like trying to distance themselves they're really not good with relating with the girls yeah. you get so basically that's i feel that was the, the the only thing we missed out but otherwise yeah 
actually um I'm nice. glad I'm glad you shared this because you're the first person who has gone to the I mean unless somebody else didn't mention about it but I usually like to pick people's brains about those who went to like single schools and I'm glad you shared that and this is a whole mm -hmm. point like people who know you that might not know you went to a single school single sex school when they hear about uh, your story and the podcast they'll know oh I didn't know so you went to a single school and <laughs> they'll they'll hear your perspective on that which I yeah. really like it's something I've learned today about what you just said. Like I never even thought about it, but like what you mentioned too, like how they teach you how to follow the blood. That was really cool. Like, yeah, I, I like some that. cool things around yeah. some cool cultures. Mm -hmm. Said I also understand um, when you talk about um, the when somebody comes out of the school when they don't know how to relate uh, with the female or things like that. So I'm glad you, you touched on that. So after that, um, she took, actually, I was going to go to a single school. Now I remember the name, uh, Kila College Butiki. That oh, was part of yeah. my, that was part of my, uh, my school too, that I was going to go to. But um, so after that, St. Henry's, so where did you go next? So I stayed at St. Henry's College too. To I wanted to change, yes, I wanted right. to change a mixed school. Mm -hmm. And uh, that year, people had passed highly. So the school I had applied to, I really didn't get the place. My oh. points were not like low, but yeah. then people had like passed highly. So I didn't get the place. And then my mom still believed in Chitovu. She liked the school. And she like, you know what? If the process, if, if the system is not broken, then you don't need to fix it. So, yeah. Fix it. yeah. Don't fix it. Yeah. It's not broken. Yeah. Then after that, go back. Uh, yeah. After that, you went to university, and you said you're still at university? Yeah, I'm still at so university. So what year did you go to university now, Um, if, now that you're still there too? Like, when did you get to the university? I joined university last year. Okay. Yeah, because of the COVID-19 oh, yeah. thing oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Am, am I allowed to say it here? Yeah, yeah, you're allowed apparently, to say it. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> there's a time where, where like, Talking about COVID nineteen in a YouTube video or something like that was. Oh uh, no no you can allowed. no you can you can say it. I've said it multiple yeah. times, so I've mm -hmm. I've not got in trouble. So. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I, we joined. Actually, my course is three years. Okay. But I'm I'm joining my third year. Oh nice. Just just like the the following this month, I'm joining my third year. Like, there's a way they have tried to summarize everything up. Mm -hmm. so like the system can get back to normal okay um so what what course did you take at university at university i'm mm -hmm. doing industrial and fine arts industrial and fine art. yeah that doesn't surprise yeah. me on on what you do <laughs> and that's the whole point where we're gonna get to that um right now yeah. that's what i'm gonna ask so you do a lot of cool art stuff and I've I've stopped. No, I didn't stalk. I was I just went on your page and just looked at all the work. I was like, this is really amazing. And I don't really Thank know you. how I got connected to you on Instagram. Either maybe I had hosted somebody on the show and then we they shared on their story and then we got connected, or somebody recommended you to be on my podcast because that's a part of the question I ask people and be ready for that at some point. And mm. then so they they recommended you to be here, but. I, I thought I don't remember how I got to connect with you on, on social media, but I'm glad I did. Um, so how did you develop the talent to do those artwork and the cartoons that you do? How did that come up? When was the first time you touched a pen to draw, to start drawing? And how did it build up? I think the first time I touched a pen so. Because I say using like a pencil, that's when I said doing my art. I think mm -hmm. I was in nursery school. Oh, wow. Like, I I remember in my nursery school, I used to draw, you know, like, we, ha we have these normal books, like mm -hmm. the, the, the normal exercise books, and then mm -hmm. they, they have lines, mm -hmm. and then you have to do your work on the lines, mm -hmm. and then there are these margins where you don't have to put anything. Yeah. So me apparently I would draw doodles in those in those margins, mm -hmm. or like draw stick figures telling my stories. Cause like you know how you be remembering things. Eh? I remember I would have my small worlds in those margins. Yeah. And and I would always get in trouble for it because you know like a teacher a teacher would think you're really not concentrating. Mm -hmm. Maybe where does this get 
get the time to draw all these things. Maybe when I'm teaching, he's doing those things. So I think that's the earliest memory I have of my work, of my art. So with time, I used to do art. I used to, to draw and stuff. But then, you know, in Uganda, okay, now things are changing, but by the time I, I was growing up, at an Akarian art was really not something yeah. you think about. Mostly it was like passion, mm-hmm. like art for the passion. Like, yeah, he's good at school, but he also knows some art. So mm-hmm. I used to do it as a passion, low-key, low-key. Of course, the, you look at those uh, artists and you really admire and stuff. But I would mostly draw art when I was in like my primary school, you know, like when they give us scientific illustrations to make I'm the guy they come to mm-hmm. like that so that's how I started my art but it was purely passion so at uh, as in high school I was really excited okay now we're going to because now high schools even have like art as they call art rooms art studios yeah. where people display their work and really fall in love and everything mm-hmm. so I got into art, like, okay, now this is my chance to study as much art as I can. So I did, like, senior one, I was doing some art. Senior two, I was doing some art. Then we reached mm-hmm. senior three, and we had to choose. Yeah. Remember, we start with 15 subjects, and then you have you to, get to 10. choose 10. Eh? Yeah. So now they are, they are grouped. We had, like, three groups, and then there was this group that had art, computer, and, uh, and technical drawing. Mm-hmm. You had to choose one one only one out of the, that combination yeah so now uh hey again sit down with my mom you know like you sit down with your parents you have to agree on what to take and everything mm-hmm. she's like ah, man i think you should take ict i really think you should take it. okay first she really she really supported my art but she wasn't looking at it as a career yeah she felt like ah, no so she's like you know what if you do ict i'm going to buy for you a laptop Yes, because I was giving her all these reasons. Like, I have no laptop, how will I practice? You know, yeah. all those reasons that I can do my art. So she's like, you know what? If you do ICT, I'm buying for your laptop. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just do ICT. So I do ICT, I give up on art. Like, I just I just settle for the fact that it's a passion. Mm-hmm. I really stop practicing. I just, I just zone off. Like, those were like two years out of art. Yeah, I was still doing my doodles and stuff, mm-hmm. but this was like two years of my life, I think, actually, without doing art. So I don't do art for senior three. I don't do art for senior four. Hmm. We come to form six. I uh, I was given BCM, BCM. Biology, uh-huh. chemistry, yeah, biology, chemistry, and math. But then I tell, I mean, no, it was, uh, was it BCM? Yeah, BCM. Then I, me, I ask for PEM, mm-hmm. yeah. physics, economics, and math. Eh? Mm-hmm. So I be there, yeah, I'm like, you know, like, I've just given up on that. I'm like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Let me just get, like, a professional course, you know, like yeah. those heavy, heavy courses. Get my money. I can always do my art as, 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 as a side thing, you guess. Mm-hmm. I can always be, like, a passionate artist. Like, when when, when people interview me, interview this scientist, they're like, what's your passion? I'll be like, yeah, I do art in my free yeah. time. You so, know it's funny. Uh, Actually, I, I, there's a guy. Um, I'm gonna host him on the podcast sometime because Nyaika recommended him. He's a doctor, mm-hmm. but he's also yeah. like a content creator. So he, he takes pictures and photography. But he's like a, a like a certified doctor. But mm-hmm. that's that reminded me of that's what it, yeah. yeah. So that's what I did to do. Uh, now my first time in the physics class, they teach things. Eh? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm understanding. I will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that, I like then, where this is I'm, going. I'm <laughs> understanding. Mm-hmm. Okay, gives examples. I'm understanding. Kati, mm-hmm. he gave us an exercise. So <laughs> now I sat down to do number one. I really couldn't figure out number one. Number two, like, I think there were like five numbers. Yeah. I really failed to figure out the numbers. I knew like it was mechanics. Is it mm-hmm. mechanics? Eh? Yeah. In physics. I knew like you would people had their answers, eh? but I really didn't know how they had got into that place <laughs> to get to the final answer. Yeah. So I'd be there. 
then some friend of mine came because first we reported on Monday, mm-hmm. that lesson was on Tuesday. Then that friend of mine came on Friday. Mm-hmm. So I explained to him the basics, like what the guy told us, eh, the elements and everything. Mm-hmm. The guy used those basics and he did the numbers. Mm-hmm. You get. He, he did his exercise and passed and everything. So I was like, really, I can't really compete with such people. Mm-hmm. I just knew I was, I was not in the right place. Yeah. Because now if the first exercise, I was in class mm-hmm. and I... I learned the principles, but then this guy wasn't even around, has like, has digested the principles and answered that. I was like, you know what? I'm going to leave. PEM is not my thing. I know, okay, I knew physics was hard. Yeah. So I wanted, like, I wanted to go for, uh, okay, like the art part of me was pulling me. So I was like, oh, which course can I do? I settled for math, economics, and art. Okay. Because my mom really wanted me to be a scientist. She mm-hmm. wanted, like, I, I don't know. I over talk about my mom. I don't want to be like a mommy's boy. <laughs> but she <knows. laughs> yeah, she's like, she's been my guardian and everything. So she wanted me to really do, you know, that like sand, like the one you do. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the one you did actually. So yeah. let me do like those heavy, heavy courses. So I'm like, you know what? If I do math, economics, and art, I'll have the soft part, my mm-hmm. soft learning, but then I'll, I'll still make my mom proud. Yeah, by doing the math and maybe economics. So remember, I hadn't done math in my O level. I hadn't like done it at UNEB. Mm-hmm. So I go to the art room. I talk to the head of department. The head of department is like, but you didn't do art. Which he, he gives me a chance. Mm-hmm. I go to the doors to change the combination. The doors refuses. He's like, you know what? You didn't do art. Remember, art is okay. People presume that. Art is a talent and everything. Right. And if you really don't have it, you can't get it when you're old. Mm-hmm. That's what people presume. So the guy is like, you know what? We don't want you to mess up. Better stick to your perm. Mm-hmm. I'm not giving you art. You didn't do it in all level. How sure am I that you really, you're going, you're going right. to do it? I go, I, I, I really write another letter, an emotional letter. You know, have to like write <laughs> letters to apply. Yeah. It's an emotional letter. I tell this guy, you know what? I messed up in my form four. I did a different course. I wouldn't want to be like an old guy, have my money or not have the money, but then when I'm not fulfilled mm-hmm. and always reflect to this time where I reject my application. Mm-hmm. It was really like very much, you know, so I, yeah. like, you know what? I, I don't want to be that guy. You reflect upon every time you feel like life doesn't want to. Yeah. yeah. You know, just go and talk to the head of department if he allows you to join him, then that's good. So I go and talk to this guy. He's like, you know what? Since you since you, you you claim that you want to be part of us, yes, it's fine. Me, I'm going to sign your document. You can, but you should realize that these guys you're going to be with have been doing art for the past two years, mm-hmm. and you really put, have to put in extra effort to, to catch up. Yeah. Because remember, art, those principles and elements that you really have to be familiar with. So, yeah, that's when I, I did my art. I was really passionate. I would go to the art room. Eh? Mm-hmm. I was like, those hard guys. Actually, something I'd forgotten about when I was telling my mom that I'm doing math, economics, and art. Mm-hmm. She's like, do you, do you feel art can be a viable career? I'm I'm like, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do research mm-hmm. into all the possible careers that an artist can have, present it to you. If you feel it's it's rich enough, yeah, then I can join us. So I took off a full weekend mm-hmm. to do my research. I did that research into animation, political yeah. cartooning, graphics design, painting, like... I reached out to different artists. Like it was really like it was mm-hmm. research. Like, yeah, research book. that's that's research pretty cool. Book. That your mom, like you give you get an opportunity for something like that, and that's what I would expect from a parent. Um, my dad did the same thing to me. Like he asks you questions, like how do you think you're gonna benefit? Like how are you gonna make money out of that? You know, like mm-hmm. other than parents forcing kids to do things the kids don't want. Why won't mm. parents like your parent, like, hey, if you prove to me that this can give you a career, this can give you a job, then you yeah. can go ahead and do it. But I hate it when parents are like, this is what you're going to do. And this is what 
I'm saying, you know, because they pay yeah. the school fees because of, but like it's like you mentioned a few things when you're telling your story of like fear of regret being an old person and you're like, man, I wish I did this. I wish, and that's the worst part of life getting to that's a point and you say, life. man, I wish I did this. I wish I did because you can't turn the clock back and it's always right. bad it's to live a regret. It's always good to do something mm -hmm. that's from your heart and something that you like, that you're proud of. So so I'm glad you did that. And I'm, I am happy that your mom also ended up doing that. So you finish from six with your fine art. How did you, how did it go like with the final exams and all that? I, I passed fine. I, had, I passed art, I think. Yeah, I passed art with an A. Mm -hmm. I think that's the highest you can get. Yeah. An A. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, I was, I was the best in my class. We were like five artists, mm -hmm. and I was the best. Oh, nice. And it, one of the things that uh, I really celebrate about the fact that I joined art is that this guy, our art teacher, was some, he was an old guy, and he had really seen it all. You guess. Mm -hmm. He had like, put in, he had many people had passed through his arm, mm -hmm. and he had taught them, like very serious artists in the country. But he was, the fact that he was giving me as an example to his students that you know what this guy came here he didn't do art in all level he didn't he joined they had refused to give him the art but he's so hard working you get like he has caught up and he's even like doing better work than the people that he found so like i i cherish that part that there are people you know, like having a talent, sometimes you have like soft touch, you're like maybe can I make it? Maybe I'm not good enough. But I feel like if I live as an example that someone can always reference me that, you know what, it's never too late for a passion. You can always decide and pick up. So I think that that's one of the, my most, the memories that I really cherish in my high school, the fact that I put that record. Um, I kept quiet because I didn't want to say yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to get the whole piece of you just talking about that because that's one of the things I advocate for on my podcast. And that's one of the things yeah. I started doing this podcast, sharing stories of encouragement and showing people it's possible. Like, that's why, because I'm I, at the end of the day, I'm going to cut out that piece that you just talked about. We just post on my page for people to hear that. Because it's, Thank you. Thank you. It, it was like good sound to my ears because... When you listen to my personal story that I have on the podcast, I tell my listeners that I grew up in a country that didn't have airplanes. I grew up in a country I didn't even know any pilot. I didn't even know any mechanic. But that's what I wanted to do. I came to the United States with people who have grown grown up with airplanes. They've lived. Kids here, when their parents know that they want to be like pilots or mechanic, that's what they're going to be doing for since when they're younger. They have schools. That, yeah. They have high schools that are just for pilots and just for mechanics. Like you go to a high school, but the main thing you focus on is that. Mm -hmm. So you come in as a kid from Uganda, Tolinyanga Kunyonyi, your first airplane was the one that brought you mm -hmm. to the States. And you work hard to get to where you are. You, that's that's what I, I was picking up from what you were yeah. saying. Like, yeah, even though you did a little bit of art before senior four, but you took a long time without even doing it to... You didn't, you didn't even know if your art was good enough to pass yes. um, because you didn't do it in senior four. So you didn't yeah. know like it's it's good enough to to get good grades, but you decided mm -hmm. to take that chance and just work hard. And the teachers told you, these guys you're going to compete with, they've been doing art for all their high school, you know? And that's something yes. that I want these kids to pick out. And mm -hmm. if anybody has not picked out anything that we've talked about ever since we started talking, like this is... The one thing and I want, I, I, yeah, yeah, I want them to to hear, and I'm glad you shared that. Um, so then yeah. you finished your form six, and you shared uh, that. So when you went to the university, um, how did you then? Because I know in in I don't think in senior six you were doing the cartoon for fine art. You were doing whatever the courses they have. A yeah, we're doing we're doing the normal the normal yeah. graphics, human figure and stuff. So my cartooning journey starts. In uh, our work, remember our work mm -hmm. is usually six months, mm -hmm. but then COVID came in and extended it up to, I think, like a year and a half. So uh, one of the things, the passions 
or one of the things that I've always wanted to do is to tell stories. I feel I'm a, a visual, story, visual storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. So I really, I really tried making movies. I really, you know, like those were hobby hobbies. Okay. So I felt like I've always wanted to to tell stories in one or another, create characters, put them to life. Mm-hmm. I'd like make narrative and everything. So in a in my in my form six work, remember I done like my research already. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was thinking, okay, now one of the ways that people make money is through illustration and cartooning. And uh, I, I had gotten some people, some YouTubers, like uh, there's a guy called Jaza. Mm-hmm. Initially, he used to call himself Draw with Jaza. That was the name of his YouTube channel. Is he and Ugandan or is no, he's 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 Australian. Okay, but he had like very beautiful tutorials. Mm-hmm. Then uh, there was a guy. Uh, then the the Ugandan, there's a Ugandan called uh, Quiz Era. There's a he's a Ugandan. There's a Ugandan called Ogon Chris Ogon. Mm-hmm. He's an editorial cartoonist in Daily Monitor. Then uh, there is a guy called Philip Nsamba. So now these are people that really. I used to like I used to like Kingo. I don't know if they still uh-huh. do. It. You remember Kingo? Kingo. Yeah, Kingo is still there. But Kingo is actually Kingo is Tanzanian. Oh really? Just that they publish him in a number of countries. Okay. Yeah. So I be there. So I studied like end up understanding some of these artists in it mm-hmm. because art is a voice. Mm-hmm. Art is a voice that you no one is born. Like when they can talk, we all pick up. We pick, pick, we pick out like words and languages from the people around us. Mm-hmm. So you can't really, you can't really say that. You know what? I invented these words. I invented you get like you pick out from different things, and then you you form your own language or you form yeah. your own way of speech. So that's 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 one of the things. Like art is a voice, and I had to enrich in my voice. I had to find the words that I'll use when I'm communicating my art, like my messages and everything. So I looked for the people whose voices I admired, admired like people like Quizera, I really liked his his colors and his his characters. There was a guy Philip Samba, he used to he made a a cartoon a comic book called Bobby and Bobby in a new vision. There was a guy called uh, that Ogon guy, Chris Ogon. Mm-hmm. He's in the Daily Monitor. He was more into political cartooning. I really like the way he would pass on serious messages, but using cartoons. So I got that collection of different voices, and I I, I found ways of like picking words from them. I'm using I'm using voices and stuff, but okay, picking styles, picking how they use their car theory, how you know, like all those different things. Yeah. So that I can form my own way of the okay my way of how I'll be communicating stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think the first half of my vacation was mostly that learning from different artists, trying to teach myself. You know, like usually when you when you young artist, you fear to like publish your work. The next step I wanted to take was to just I, I looked at your art and the stuff you draw. First of all, we're gonna start from uh your illustrations getting into daily monitor. I saw that picture and I wanted you to talk about two days ago. You posted on your Instagram that so today my illustration on the cartoon got published at Daily Monitor's Scoop magazine. And you are so excited. And earlier you, really really you were just talking about those mentors or the people you're looking at that draw this mm-hmm. art to Daily Monitor. How was that like and how did you feel? Having my work published was really, I don't know, it was a dream come true. You know, like those small, those small, small things that you know, when when it when it gets published, you realize it's not like very hard. Mm-hmm. But the fact it it was published is really it was really a dream come true. Yeah. And uh it's it, it's a journey that's you know, like how you be reading newspapers, you like how do these people get published? Mm-hmm. Because the point is the point uh and I've realized this over a period of time, the point is not they're not the they're not like the best artists in the world, mm-hmm. or even in Uganda. But the fact is that, first of all, the message that they put out and the the process that your work goes through to be published in a paper mm-hmm. is really a lengthy one. You get you have to, to, to it has to go through the editor of that 
particular pull out then it goes through a, a designing editor you get like all those people have to approve up to when it's like published and everything yeah. so i was really excited i was really happy and actually i think i, I talked about it in my caption that yeah i'm i'm excited mm-hmm. i think it's part of the caption yeah that's a that's a big achievement and when i saw that i remember i put a like on that i really like it and i was just mm-hmm. amazed by your the quality of your work the talent you have um Thank i you. raised my camera here on the computer a little bit so you can see i have a picture on the back there uh yeah i bought, I bought that painting to support a friend and it came from mm-hmm. jamaica but i oh. love art i love art and um like some of the pictures are not hung up in my house but i really do love art i did art okay. in high school i just didn't talk about it because i wanted it was yeah. your show so but i did <laughs> art i did art in both all over and a level i did meg art okay. uh, math okay. economics geography and fine art um okay. the other one there's a picture let me look at it i have it pulled up here um there's a picture you posted it's it just says 33 february Mm. It was Valentine's Day and the caption was saying wrong wrong distance relationship. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to those who are sailing in the long distance relationship boat. Me inclusive. Know that things end easy and respect the efforts you take to make it work. So we just got to talk about that. First of all, you called it a wrong distance relationship. Wrong? Uh, uh, let me read the, the cartoon because I'm going to put it up here. For, actually, if you let me, I'm going to download these pictures and add them when I'm editing this so the listeners or the people on YouTube can see them. It's I'll fine. ask for your permission for that. And I'll remember I'll put credits in there. So this okay. lady is in Hoima. She's calling the boyfriend or the husband, wherever he is, and he says, baby, do you miss me as I miss you? So he's like, yeah, definitely. But in this guy's bed, there's another, there's a side nice chick. chick. <laughs> <laughs> how did you come up with that story? And um, how... So uh, usually uh, when, when I'm doing like my cartoons and, uh, okay, I, I, I look at my cartoons as uh, I'm trying to communicate something. Mm-hmm. And I usually I look at some of these days that people celebrate Valentine's, Independence, and all these things. But I try not to look in the direction that everyone is looking at. Mm-hmm. Because uh, in, anyone would really think about making a cartoon celebrating like people, they are closing up, like they're celebrating a milestone on their Valentine's and everything. Mm-hmm. But I was, by that time, I was in a long distance relationship. Mm-hmm. It was a first long distance relationship, you know, like there is this, this thing where you 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 talk to someone and you know they're not next to you. Yeah. And you you know what you're going into. But then this thing where someone is actually accessible, you guys hit up something, you start like talking or dating. Then after they leave mm-hmm. the vicinity, they leave the country, they yeah. leave your area, but then you still like them and you still have to push. Mm-hmm. to push on you still have to communicate to. but the, i was looking at the fact that long distance relationships are really hard to maintain because yeah. you know like there, there are five different there are five love languages yeah there's quality time there's a uh, receiving gifts, gifts. Uh-huh. there's a uh, what's this thing words of affirmation yeah uh-huh. touch but, oh it's, i Is think it's one? called physical something physical, yeah. physical touch i think yeah there's, one of yeah there's acts of service and mm-hmm. two of those two of those five actually need when someone's close by right. quality time okay you can have quality time on phone mm-hmm. but then physical touch is really someone has physical to be touch. accessible so now he's the person who whose primarily love languages are those two mm-hmm. how do you expect them to really push like to make the relationship work and that's if actually, they still love you, that's a good you, that's a good analogy right there. I yeah. never thought about it. <laughs> yeah. So, now they like you, and they sort like they're not trustworthy. But the only way they understand that they're being loved is when that language is spoken to them, mm-hmm. and you can't speak that language when you're really far away from them. So I was looking at, as I wanted to just point my light or my spotlight to that fact that you know that 
that these are people in a long distance relationship. One person is missing the other and the other is saying that they miss them back. But the other is maybe cheating on them. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're cheating and, you know, like you, there's a guy I was listening to, like sometimes cheating helps to, to make the relationship last. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guys will like that the guy the, the you know, no, like that. <laughs> I know, but okay the thing is eh, sometimes like okay cheating is not nice and everything but this guy may have someone around mm -hmm. to fill the void but then when they're still maybe they're waiting for you you're out you've gone out of the country for like two years and the mm -hmm. expect of the two years mm -hmm. this person is just uh, like as, as a placeholder you get rather than him breaking up with you and just starting over, he's having this person around and then you come back. So mm, I like, like that. I like that. Usually, <laughs> usually <laughs> my cartoons are not like a definite, it's not like a statement that mm -hmm. this is what I mean that cheating is good, cheating is bad. You get it. People mm -hmm. shouldn't be in long distance relationship or not, but it is a conversation starter. Okay. I, I I try to point you in that direction, and I tell you what you guys think about. You get like mm -hmm. now you can say I really agree with that cartoon. Things are not as the people who don't completely as a, before I joined that long distance relationship, as I really didn't believe in it. Like you really can't say you love each other because my mm -hmm. primary love language is touch. Yeah. You can't say you love with this person, and yet you're far away from another. But then the people whose love languages are maybe words gifts. of affirmation and gifts. Yeah. So even though he's in London and in Uganda, as long as you send them gifts and you, you tell them every morning that I love you, the best, you're the queen of my life, mm -hmm. they feel they are loved, you get. So yeah. it was really it was really a conversation starter. And yeah. Yeah, it that, yeah that, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now I went yeah. back to another one that's 40 weeks old. It's December 27, 2021. Um, you, you said in your, I really like captions and comments and all that. You said I cannot be single for two consecutive years. I should add finding love onto. This was before that other uh, we talked about. That, and, yeah. And the last line was DMs are open for potentials. And um, actually, the way you did it, it was pretty cool. I was looking at both the pictures, and I'm gonna throw mm. them on here for the people who are watching on YouTube. Um, yeah. 2001 has a single guy standing in his with his pockets, and then 2002 mm. has a couple, like because we're coming. Yeah. To, is that what you're looking at there? Yes, as 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 uh, trying to, as I told you, usually I have like a state schedule, and I, I feel sometimes I think about like making those cartoons like on milestones, like special days and everything. Mm -hmm. So we're almost getting into a year and I was thinking, okay, now what what should I do to make make what should I like do to to do something about the next year or like to celebrate it or to to just say something about it. And right. then uh I think I'd seen something similar somewhere. Someone talking about like 22 is is a year of like two people, mm -hmm. single people should stay in the other year and everything. So and as as Single, <laughs> I don't know. I was there. there and single ish. I mean, single ish. Uh -huh. Single ish. And I really, I wanted to to advertise myself. To, yeah. To I say, think... yeah, you know what, you guys, I'm open to make a pass and an assist for yourself. Uh -huh. I'm yeah. open to you guys <laughs> because you realize I can be single, and the other person may have interest in me, and. Uh, they really not sure if I'm single, you get it? Because we don't like work with a tagline that you know what you guys I'm single. So I felt like okay, it was also sometimes trying to say that you know what, sometimes we just have to to say it out loud that you know what you guys I'm single and mm -hmm. I'm open for interaction, you get it? because now if you just be there, because we all assume that someone is taken, especially if they're good, be like a person can't be good yeah. and then take so yeah, it was it was an advert. It was just to put something <laughs> light and funny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I really appreciate you walking us through this journey. And I've had a whole conversation uh, with you. And this is something I really like. That's why when I reached out to you, 
I didn't yes. come up to you. So, oh, I have these questions I'm going to ask you. Like I made a whole list. I don't like those kind of interviews. I want a kind of interview yeah. where we just sit down and just have a conversation. You know, like I didn't, yeah. I don't have anything written down here. It was just all in my head. And I like mm. it because you get the raw information from somebody. Yes. And just like how, it's like a conversation. Yeah, it's like a conversation. I, I used to be scared of interviews. Like when they say, I made a lot of like TV <laughs> and radio interviews. So they have yeah. a paper of questions they're asking you. And it makes the conversation mm. not go very well because somebody's yeah. nervous. It's like, oh, what if I say a wrong answer? Whereas no. in a conversation, you're not really going to give a wrong answer. You're just going to talk. Yeah. It's no longer, yeah. So that's, and and uh, mm -hmm. before we... Uh, and I think uh, I wanted to say something about how I go to the Daily Monitor. Yeah, yeah, and I was actually. Okay. And the, talk about the cartoon too. What it what it means? The one I I see. Oh, what it means? A blazer. Yeah. So usually the thing is we admire people, and we want to be like them. But one of the easiest ways of being like someone if, is if that person teaches you how how to be like them. You get it. The, you, your father or your mother, you really take up their manners and their hard work. So, like the, the principles, because they have been teaching you that you have been around them, you see how they handle their so I mean themselves, how they handle their business and everything. So, uh, I think young young people should look at getting mentors. That's something that you should really consider in whatever field that you're part of mentorship is the easiest way of gaining skills and opportunities so like that the chris guy of daily monitor the editorial cartoonist mm -hmm. i told you some guy i was admiring and everything but uh you know i would uh, i would be there one day who'll see my work maybe one day and stuff so i started tagging him in my work like i just took the deliberate moment like let me attract attention let me just draw attention i i, I would tag him then I first tagged him for like two cartoons, nothing came out. Then after he liked the two of my cartoons, mm -hmm. then after the following notification, he had followed me. I really like so stricken. I was like, you know what, this guy, my like the person I'm looking up to is actually liking it. It looked like a small gesture, but it was really big to me. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to him like on Instagram. I I create the like the conversation when I tell him how I like him, I want to be like him, we talk and everything. And uh, I think a few months down the road, when there was an internship opportunity at Daily Monitor, he really hooks me up. He tells me, you know what? There's an intern internship opportunity at the Daily Monitor. You can come and apply it. And, and that's how I got there. So usually we have to reach out to these people. Like mm -hmm. you have to create to start the conversation, you don't you, you don't really have to count on uh, on luck on karma or anything, but you have to you have to take that step and right. maybe let the rest happen. But at least when you have taken that step, do what you can to towards your success. So, yeah, I've been doing internship a daily monitor. It was it, it's a half a month and a half. It's so ongoing. Uh, I think about the cartoon. Uh, there's this article. This guy called um, Ian Otega he usually writes an article in Scoop. Scoop mm -hmm. is in the Daily Monitor also. Mm -hmm. So he was really trying to write about those Ugandans who feel they have arrived, like who feel that entitlement and arrival is in. So I was thinking about like different people, people who have like gone abroad, like there's a way when someone, when some people, not you, but when some summer. people, <laughs> yeah, they come back and they, they want to make, to tell us how things are done abroad you know what you, you guys are doing this but abroad we do things like this you get you know i was also talking about those people who have been like ldc law development center mm -hmm. the people like the lawyers and stuff mm -hmm. there's a way they want to make everything legal everything can can like take you to court you get so yeah. the, my concept was you know like in uganda we have a problem like most border border guys don't have 500 coins you mm -hmm. get like you a journey may be like 2500 then you give him 3000 then he tells you you know what i don't have the 500 you get mm -hmm. so basically you leave him with the 500 now imagine if he gets like 20 customers a day 
Fugate. That's like ten thousand or five hundred that she has stayed with. Yeah. So as 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 really that's something that has really happened to many people. So I thought it was relatable. Many people in like the country. So I was thinking, okay, now this is a lawyer who goes off a judge and the uh, okay, the judge is like slang for border. Yeah, and border, border guy yeah. tells him, you know what, he's even opening his you know what you guy, I don't have any coins on me. Mm-hmm. And then we'd expect a lawyer to just say, you know what, ah, 500 is chill money, it's okay, yeah. you can take it. But now this guy is telling him, Kablaza, Kablaza is like brother. Yeah, brother, like, yeah. Brave brother. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not your brother, really. I'm, I'm a counsel, you should address, like that's what the lawyer is saying, I'm not your brother. <laughs> and he did, I'm not your brother, I'm a counsel. And really, you better give me my money or else I'm, I'm taking you to court, you get like... Mm. So you, it's really outrageous, like, like as in only 500 and not to take me to court. So mm-hmm. we were looking, we're trying to, I was trying to compliment to the article. He had written something in the article, he had written about like how lawyers overuse, over want to tell everyone about the law and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to focus on that section of the article. Yeah, that's that's really good, and that's a good uh, illustration to to put out. I mean, it has a story to it, like you've been saying. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, I really appreciate you. So, I want I want to get a cartoon of myself, Tozi. I well, I think I'll get I'll get in touch with you after the recording. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> yeah, um, maybe I can pull you on my podcast and just hang it in my in my office somewhere and just hang yeah. it out there, or like yeah, even. Maybe put it on my my website i'm trying to build my website but anyway i wanted to ask you a question as we wind up um mm. what has been your life lesson till today my life lesson um continuous improvement and endless search for knowledge my i i, I always think oh i've discovered that the more information you get the more skills you get they really push you to another level and every time you, you you seek out improvement, but however small it is or however big it is, it will make you a better person. Get like once every time you, you always look aim higher, you're like, you know what, I want to improve on this. Maybe like even in my drawing, you say today or this year, I want to improve on, on my line work, I want to improve on my colors. You you should never really settle for where you are. Mm-hmm. You always seek knowledge and seek continuous improvement. That has nice. been my life lesson. Yeah, that's a good that's a good life lesson. Continuous improvement means like every day you look to be better, to get better, to yeah. get better. And like you can be better. Yeah, there's something to add on to yourself every day. And that's that's really good. It's a good reminder for everybody who is listening. Um the other question is what gets you excited about life? Life. <laughs> Fuck the time it's die. <laughs> <laughs> The, the fact the that fact you might die gets you excited. Excites me. Like the, usually when I feel low and uh, I'm just living through life, mm-hmm. when I remember that I may die, and I may die. Okay, I'm just I may die tomorrow, and these are the only few hours. I'm, maybe these these hours I'm living are the last hours mm-hmm. I'm having. Excites me, and I really look for something better or something I can I can use that time for. Get mm-hmm. yeah. So the fact that I may die any time now really excites me. It brings that's, my vibe back. Yeah, that's that's really good. You remember that? Oh man, I could I could, be, <laughs> I could have been dead. So let me enjoy this little yeah. time I got. Um, the final question I'm gonna ask you today is like, um, who would you like to see on my podcast? And you're gonna help me to connect me to that person so I can host them on the podcast here to share about their stories or anything. So the person I really want to see on your podcast is a, is a friend mm-hmm. and a mentor. Is you know there is something called peer mentorship. Mm-hmm. This guy is really young. Actually, he's younger than me because mm-hmm. I made uh, I made twenty one in June and he just made twenty one in September. Okay. So he's younger than me, but he's really 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 hardworking. He's really really he he really wants improvement continuous improvement and i really learn a lot from him like be it socially be it business wise be it like he's really a nice guy i don't know i can't i can't like yeah i can't describe him enough but he's uh he's called nathan kutesa 
Okay. I don't know if you have seen him somewhere. You no, can put his side. He's a photographer and a designer. Okay. So I would really want to to see to hear his conversation with you. Yeah. I would really want yeah. to hear you guys talk and you know what's funny is like the guys that I've hosted on the podcast is, and I ask them this question so they recommend some of their friends and it's funny when they listen to their friends stories like oh I didn't even know that about you yeah <laughs> so like I, got, I hosted like three content creators in Uganda I don't know if you've yeah. seen Mr. Musinguzi he does really yeah, good Mr. Yeah, yeah Mr. Really Musinguzi nice. actually I think I discovered you from Mr. Musing. Okay, podcast. maybe that, yeah, that's that, why. The podcast is him, yeah. yeah. Really so like man. him and then Nabs, because uh, Mr. Musing was recommending Nabs, uh, who is also a content creator in travel and what. Uh, so when they listen to each other's stuff, it's like, oh, I didn't even know you worked at MTN. Oh, I didn't know that like, uh-huh. this. So it was, it was really, <laughs> really cool like, to hear that. You really never know like to think about your friend till you hear that conversation yeah. with other people. So yeah, so I really I, I really seeing. appreciate. I'm gonna take here a quick picture. I smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got I got half of my screen with your cartoon, so that would that would be oh. cool to just post with it. Yeah. Um, all right, brother. Thank you very much, and we'll stay in touch. All right, it's really been a pleasure being here. It's really been a pleasure just being with you. Mm-hmm discussing these things and sharing the literature you know to your audience i really yeah i really like it yeah thank, yeah thank you thanks for giving me the opportunity it took longer than i had planned but i'm glad that we had a good conversation so that's yes. that'll be good um it's better be longer than short you know people like to hear all the conversations so I'm yeah let's right. hope that our team wins yeah, I'm actually going to change my jazz right now. I'm going to check the lineup and then we'll go from there. All right, man. Keep All right, thank you. Bye. Hey there, uh, this is Barney Kibuka, the host of the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Thanks for watching and listening to my podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with a friend and recommend somebody to this podcast. Don't forget to leave a feedback on this podcast because that's how we grow. And also don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. Join us on our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much and be blessed.